Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. And you know, our sister just sang, sang the song, Worship Him. Born, born, born again. Thank God, born again. Born of the water, the spirit and the blood. Thank God, I'm born again. I bring greetings to you today from Living Word Global Outreach. We're Pastor Brown and myself from Ministers in Wellington. And we thank the Lord for open opportunities today to come and worship with you. And I understand that um, I have about 30, 40 minutes. So I will not delay. Please have your Bibles open because we're going to be turning to a few scriptures. And we're going to look at what the Lord has to say today. You may be seated. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The first scripture I'm going to have you look at with me is Proverbs 3. Verse 1. Proverbs 3, verse 1. Verses 5 and 6. And it reads... Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Verse 6 says, In all thy ways, all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. So the topic for today is si je, je dis, hein? Do I fully trust in God? Que, bon Dieu, tu bon Dieu? Do I fully trust in God? Que, bon Dieu, tu bon Dieu? One famous speaker says One way to be successful is to believe God. For who quit, bon Dieu. And a sure way Your bon to be unsuccessful pour pas en via, is to doubt God. Ou pas bon Dieu. Now let's look at the word trust. Trust is not merely believing. Trust calls for a total surrender. Let's think of your relationship with your children, with your wives, with your husbands. In order to fully trust in that relationship, you're not only going to believe what the person says, but you're going to go beyond that, that whatever it takes, you're going to be there for that person. That's trust. It doesn't matter what other people say. You're focusing on what that person says. Now, the level of trust that you have in a person comes out of relationship. Say relationship. 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 The deeper the relationship, the closer the trust. The closer the trust. The newer the person is in your life, the thinner the relationship. The thinner the trust. So then, total trust 
comes out of a close relationship. Tout croyance aussi le bon bon relation avec mon nom. Here Solomon is saying Solomon dit dans passage ça to trust in the Lord. Il dit croire dans mon Dieu. Not with some of your heart. C'est pas avec des mines en cœur. But with all of your heart. Mais avec tout cœur. Because you have developed a relationship with Jesus Christ. Parce que tu as une relation avec Jésus Christ. And because of that outstanding relationship. Parce que bon relation avec Jésus. Hein? You can fully trust in Him. Pour capable de croire lui. He says, trust in Him with all. Il dit croire dans lui avec tout cœur. Everybody say all. Tout le monde dit all. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Because the relationship that you have with God goes beyond your understanding and my understanding. You and I can fathom it out. We can work it out with our minds. It says, in all thy ways, all thy ways, every way, in all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Now, every command that God gives us, he gives us a condition. Les bano yon condition pour les deux. If you do this, si vous faites ça, I will do that. Les mêmes la fait ça. He says, if you trust in me with all your heart, c'est des soucoups bon Dieu à tout cœur. And lean not to your own understanding. Ou pas faire tout bagarre sous compréhension. He says, in in all your ways you will acknowledge Him. Je dis dans tout ce que moi toujours contre bon Dieu. Then. That's the condition. He says, then, he says, I will direct your path. So now that we have established what trust is, total surrender, we're going to look at one other scripture right now. Let's go to 1 Samuel 17. And we're going to start at verse 20. Amen when you find it. Amen. Read in verse 20. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with the keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to the fight and shouted for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words, and David heard them. Read in verse 24. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, they fled. They fled from him and were sore afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen the man that is come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And he shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches, and will give him his daughter, and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake to the man that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine? 
and taketh away the reproach from Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the man, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, Why camest thou down hither? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart. For thou hast come down that thou mightest see the battle. We're going to pause there for a little bit. Here, here is a familiar story of David facing the Philistine giant. David, But one thing I need to say, David did not see Goliath as a giant. David saw Goliath as an uncircumcised Philistine. So I ask you this morning, how do you see the challenges in your life? Do you see them as giants? Or do you see them as situations that you are going to conquer in the name of Jesus, with the blood of the Lamb, with God as your Father. Amen. Est-ce que vous avez un bagage que Jésus a pour passer là-dedans sans problème? How do you see the situations and the challenges of your life? Comment voyez-vous les situations dans la vie? We all face desperate challenges and trials throughout our lives. Nous tous avons des problèmes dans la vie, ça. But it is your choice, choix your choice, choix and moi. my choice, choix pas non. that will make the difference in fait, the way we conquer those situations. Nous fait différent dans qui gens nous gourmets avec situation ça. There's a familiar saying that goes. Et on parle qui toujours dit. Your attitude. Jean agit. Will tell what your attitude is going to be. Which means the way you behave, the way you handle your problems will tell how far you're going to go in God. Amen? Amen. David saw David had the courage. Say courage. Say courage. Say courage. Courage. David had the courage. David the courage. To face his Goliath. Pour te gommer avec Goliath. In our lives today. Dans la vie d'aujourd'hui. We have to have the courage. Faut que nous gagne courage. To face our desperate situations. Pour nous parler dans situation. We have to have the courage to fight. Faut nous gagne courage pour battre. We have to have the courage to win. Faut nous gagne courage pour gagner. We have to have the courage to see the end of this Christian journey. For we are not going to battle this life in vain. Our goal is to end this journey jubilantly with God. We want Him to say at the end of this life Enter into the joys, my child. Andre, that guy won't be too fun. Come on in. Andre, you have done well to fight. We do battle well. So we are not beating this air in vain. No bala pour en vain. We are fighting this life. La bouvain. With courage. Avec courage. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now, one of the things that really upset David was this uncircumcised Philistine, Goliath, Goliath by name. Goliath. 
He would come out morning and evening. Living in the living in the morning and evening. Matin avec la nuit. Morning and evening. Matin avec la nuit. Taunting the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Il a bye bye no bon Dieu problème. No reverence. Il va bien respect pour nous. No respect. Il va donc qu'un bas respect. And that upset David more than anything else. Ça fait David fâcher que tout l'autre bagage. What we need to do is to look at the giants in our lives. Ça nous peut faire engager dans la vie de nous. Size them up for what they are. Gardez eux pour ça oui. And make plans for the end result. Fais plan, les nous fin défaite nous. Amen. When God gave David the okay to fight the giant. Le bon Dieu dit David ou dit qu'à goûter à géant ça. David had already decided in his mind. David dit que t'as une affaire lui. Based on what the relationship he had before. C'est la relation de qui a conduit. So it all depends on that previous relationship. Yes. Faut qu'il y ait une relation avant. Brethren, you can't go into fight. Vous pas qu'à l'engouement. Not having established a previous relationship. Non pas qu'on relation déjà. You gotta know for yourself. Faut qu'on ait pour tes pauvres. Who God is to you. Qui mon bon Dieu est pour un. You gotta know for yourself what God has already done for you and with that experience it gives you the courage to go into battle with confidence knowing God who has started that thing he is faithful to complete it amen amen Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Before David had already hit the giant, Avant David, géant, with his little slingshot, avec Fistibalia, David had already seen his enemy David as dead. Déjà. Let me say that again. I, I don't think you all got that. Before David swing his first slingshot at, at his enemy he had already perceived his enemy as dead. That means the battle was already won before the fight started. The before the fight started. That is God. Goliath was nine feet tall. Goliath did left pied. He had armor of metal, leaves. Leaves on top of leaves, on top of leaves. All the way down. And when David went to Saul, Le David al kout Saïl. He asked permission. Le di Saïl bon permission. And Saul said, okay, but come here, son, come here. Paul, le Saul di, okay, mais vin, vin kouté, vinin. Try this on. Le di mette bagay sa yo sou. And Saul gave him his armor gear. Le di bet, e, e, jile pal sou li mento. Heavy. Le di lou. Metal. Un pil metal. Helmet. Le di on pil chapeau lou fe na tet ni. David put it on. Le David fin bete li. David said no, Saul. David di non se sa yel. No king. No wa pa kapab. I don't know all of this. Mwen pa kompren et sak sou mwen. But I know God. Mwen kwen bon di. I can work with this. Mwen pa kapab traba sak sou mwen. But I can work with God. Mwen pa kapab traba sak sou mwen. I already know what God has said to me. Mwen pa kapab traba sak sou mwen. And I know. Mwen pa kapab traba sak sou mwen. Avec bon Dieu. That uncircumcised Philistine is already dead. Look at the end of your battle before you begin to fight. Because at the end of your battle, whatever God has said to you, 
the bon salon de Dieu. That is exactly what the end product is. And there's some people who will say to you. Oh Jess, you can't do that. You can never find that guy and win. You can never go through that problem and win. That is more than you. You can't do that exam and be successful. You don't even speak English that well. You have an accent. You can't do this and be successful. But God. Hey. But God. God has already given you the victory, brethren. He has already written the result on the table of your heart. He has already imprinted on your mind exactly what he's going to do through you. And one speaker said if he can get it to you, he can get it through you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. When you pray, don't just say, please, God. Your prayer is already lined up to the will of God. You don't have to beg him and plead him for the results of what he has given you. Because the Bible says he has already given you the keys to the kingdom. Hallelujah. And all you have to do is go to the door with the right key and open the door with the keys from the kingdom. He has already given you exactly what you need to win your battle. So don't be uh, perturbed. Don't be concerned so much about what you have to do. But focus your mind. Your mind is where all the battle is won. Focus your mind. Jesus. Jesus. Focus your mind on what God has said in his word to you. Amen. Trust God that it has already happened. And start thanking Him. Call those things that are not as if they are. Thank Him for the victory. Even before the victory is won. God, I thank you that you have already allowed me to conquer my enemy. God, I thank you for the result God, I thank you for this this uh, challenge that I that that I'm going through. I thank you that you've already opened the way. Thank him. Thank him. That it's already done. Because that is trust. That is faith. When you combine your faith. With the word of God. Let me tell you something, brethren. There is nothing that can stand in your way when you believe this word. You can take this to the bank. You can take this to the exam room. You can take this to your challenge. Combine the word of God. Don't interpret it. Don't, don't water it down. Don't say what if. Don't second guess what God has told you. Take him at his word. David says, for his word. David Paola. Is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. His word is yea and yea forevermore. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. Now you're going to have some naysayers that tell you you can't do it. 
David had his, had his elder brothers. Kwe David la. They didn't believe in him. Yo pa kwe David ti ka tue Goliath we. And even though they didn't believe in him. Malgri yo pa kwe no David. That did not deter him. Sa pa ke bi David. He stood there. Li kope. Because he had a business to take care of. Pas ke te ke business pou te regle. And David said, isn't there a cause? David dit, est-ce que c'est pour eux? Isn't there a reason for me to be here? Est-ce que vous avez besoin de là? His brothers were saying, I know you. Frère, vous dites-moi qu'on est là. You left your few sheep back in the wilderness. Few sheep. Vous avez des animaux. Undermining what he's doing. Il a fait le songer. But you know what? David kept focus on what God has already told him. Mais David pas qu'il est allé tout d'elle, il s'est abonné à dire là. So what he did? Ça David te fait. He kept focus on the end result. Il commençait, il pensait avec ça qu'il arrivait. There are only two ways about trust. Il y a des bagages et les deux quoi? You trust God. Ou quoi bon Dieu? Or you don't. Ou pas quoi? There is no gray area. Again, you either trust God with all your heart. Not saying the what if or you think I can. You either trust Him or you don't. No third way gray area about it. But you know, when you're in college, Lord, college, sometimes before you go to your majors, you have to do what they call prerequisitions. And prereqs are courses that you have to do to prepare for the main for your for your main courses. Ces classes à préparer ou pour aller sur la bonne là. So God has given us some prereqs. Bon Dieu a pas donc quelques classes là, quelques leçons. And one of the things that He has given us a prerequisition. You know les sons là nous yo. He said we need a clean heart. Il dit on besoin un cœur qui pur. A clean heart He will not despise. Un cœur qui pur il va pas quitter la lit. He says we need a clear mind. Il veut penser qui clean, qui étoyé. And when you have a clear mind, donc on pense qui clair. It means that you have to empty yourself. Ça veut dire oui, non mais. The Greek word there is kenous. Donc le classe est kenous. Emptying of the self. Il dit retirer tout ça pas bon non mais. It's like at the end day when all your trash is in your bin before you go to bed take that trash out the emptying of your soul bearing your soul before God holding nothing back David says create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Jesus. So we need a clear we need a clear mind. We need a clean heart and we need a pure motive. What is your motive for doing the things you do? Why do you even come to church? Church on Sundays. What is your motive for doing the things you do? Are you looking for praise from someone? Good job, my sister. Great job, my brother. Good to see you today, my sister. It's not about you. The glory to God be all the glory. To God be all the praise. To God be all the honor. Forever. And ever. And ever. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Make sure your motive. 
fait ce qu'ils raison. Hein? It's right. Ils ont bon raison. When you have a clear mind, a clean heart, and a pure motive, then you will be obedient. He says, if you be obedient and willing, you will eat the good of the land. Isn't that what the word says? So focus on God. And he will give you a glimpse of the finished product before the battle has even started. Praise the name of Jesus. When you talk about empty me, there's a song that says empty me of every sinful stain. And begin my sweet walk with thee. Shine down upon me, Lord. And fill me anew. In every way, Lord. Let me be more like you. So how do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as a loser? God sees you as a winner. You see yourself as troubled? God sees you as not distressed. You see yourself as perplexed? God sees you as not in despair. Do you see yourself as persecuted? God says you're not forsaken. You see yourself as cast down? God says you're not destroyed. You see yourself as discouraged? God says you're courageous. Do you see yourself as a child, a young child, young in the Christian, in the Christian walk of God? God sees you as a king. The song says, trust and obey. For there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust on and obey. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. My prayer today is that you will trust God all the more. Trust in Him and you will learn to fully and completely surrender yourself and God will get the glory and you will get the good for your life. God bless you today. Amen. Amen. Amen.